Praise the Lord. This is Evangelist Charles Kruger coming to you with the word of the Lord. But first, we're going to practice the presence of the Lord. If you hear my dog barking, let me just show you. So, yeah, he is basically. <laughs> Praise the Lord. How are you? Bless you guys. Just waiting for everybody to get up in, in, the, in the live stream. So tonight we're going to practice the presence of the Lord. We're going to pray in tongues. We're going to worship the Lord. We're going to confess the word. We're going to get a dose of the joy of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. We all need a new dose of the Holy Ghost and the joy of the Lord. We need to drink every day. We need to abide in the vine in Jesus name. So we're just waiting for some more people to join. And then the Lord started speaking to me about finances. He started speaking to me about finances and last night, I don't know who, who joined last night. Hello, bless you, bless you. Tell me who's watching. <laughs> Last night we just had an awesome time just reading the word. I thought it was about one hour, but it was about two hours. I mean, we went live and we just read the word and read and read and read. I thought it was one hour. And it was almost two, it was one, point, one, one hour and 50 minutes. And it, I can't believe it. It, was, it, could, it couldn't have been that long. It's like two hours, can't be. Anyway, bless you. Bless you, Leanne. Is it Leani? Leanne, bless you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, Braga City. Hallelujah, that's my dog playing. <laughs> We're going to pray in tongues. I'm here in the gym. We're still in the lockdown. But that's not going to keep us from the presence of the Lord, of practicing the presence of the Lord. If you got your communion elements ready, we're going to take communion tonight as well. We're just going to sit around the table of the Lord and take communion and, have, and just receive. Consciously, intentionally, and on purpose, Everything that the Lord has for us. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Jebre sato kolo brogosa. Jebra babando rebeke televende. Thank you, Jesus. Se brabobolo robo shekata. Thank you, Jesus. Se bragado lo robota. All right, let's pray in tongues. Pras televende. We've got about half an hour of practicing the presence of the Lord. And then I'm going to release a word on finances. We're going to take communion. And, uh, we're getting into the presence of the Lord. We're not uh, busy with some show or some formula of pretense or anything like that. We're getting into the presence of the Lord. And the Lord led me to do these live things and pray live with people. Because um, he said, you don't just teach people to pray, you show them how. It's, a, it's an anointing that's imparted, you know. The presence is contagious. The presence and the anointing on your life is contagious. You've got to show, it, this is the spirit of Elijah that makes it plain, that opens up. You know John the Baptist came in the spirit of Elijah and nobody could recognize Jesus except John the Baptist. Nobody. The, the spirit of Elijah recognizes Jesus when nobody else can. And so he was the only one that said, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away. Because he came unto his own, and his own received him not. The light shined in the darkness, and the darkness could not comprehend it. Couldn't get a hold of it. Couldn't understand it. Okay? So, so there is a spirit of Elijah that opens up the deep secret things of God, that makes it plain, that opens it up and invites even children into the presence of the Lord. That's why the word says, we've got to be like children. Otherwise, we're never getting into the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. And so, we open up our prayer lives. And men of God, open up your prayer lives so that people can see how you go into the presence of the Lord. And how you enjoy fellowship with the Lord. God's about to invade churches. God's about to go into churches and churches will never, church services will never be the same. Wherever they allow the Holy Spirit, there's going to be peace, there's going to be joy, there's going to be laughter, there's going to be tears of joy. There's going to be the fountains of the deep opening up in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So we're going to pray. Just, a, just pray for five minutes in tongues. Hallelujah. Let's just get in the Spirit. Let's practice the presence of the Lord. And don't go anywhere or tune in in half an hour's time. You don't have time to pray with us now. Because I'm going to release a word on finances. 
for a time such as this. Hallelujah. Reba gar de le viri di besuta karada babra bashi. Rebre be 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 siti li briendo lo robo shakata karada babra kasi. Just pray in tongues there right now where you are. Just out loud. Just pray in tongues. Zande menenge zekete. Doesn't help to scream at the devil in tongues. He doesn't understand you and you don't understand you and God's not hard of hearing. Rebrege siti li at robo shete. But get involved. Participate. Get in the spirit. Celebedo. Ravrege de gire shoto robo shakada baba baba rabando. Get in the glory cloud. The cloud of God's glory is all around us right now. Jale mesto. Ezita bagodo robo shekete. Evita barodo bo sekete lebendo. Ask the Holy Spirit to open up your spiritual eyes and the eyes of your understanding so that you'll see the things of the Spirit, that you'll know that there's many more with us than is against us. E rabo go de galabraga sheke do rodobota. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for this privilege of knowing you. Zeta la bashe. Ele beredi bedi beredi bedi koto roduboshe. Just pray in tongues. Gen da mundo. Just get in the spirit. Open up. Rebede kete. Open up your heart. Pela zata karabato. Surrender. Surrender. When you pray in tongues, you surrender. You surrender your flesh. You surrender your members. You surrender your mouth. Kidaba godo roduboshe. It teaches you to surrender. And the more you familiarize yourself with surrender, the more you will be able to pinpoint the source from where the Spirit of the Lord speaks. When you're familiar with knowing how to surrender, then later on you can do it in a moment. You'll just step into the the glory cloud, bragado, levere de zeti, rebe de gete le rebe de veto, rodobo shekata, baba, 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 eh, revende, mende, gendo, robo, je de bere divo. Just pray in tongues for five minutes, selaba, elebe de bere de vigo do rodobo sham. Thank you, Jesus, se de bigo do rodobo shetalabanga, ele de reti talaba, oh, rebe de bende re de queso, ezende libido robo, shende re de veke. I de re de bito lo robo shi da rabagando. Ezen de le vido rombon dongo. Ezen ge denge re de vende re de besi. Izita ta trakase ke te le vito. Oh goodness. Oh the thing is dead. Sorry. Gimbal's flat. Sorry. Re baga de le re ve di ge yashoto kobo. Ez dangan do lo robo papakata ka rabakata. Re bre besi. I rividiki eto lo robo shikata baga. Lem brengen do lo robo sa. Al da ger de vetar gandum. Re vre bezete re de ve shokoto. Thank you Jesus. Thank you for your anointing. Thank you for your glorious presence. Thank you for your peace. Thank you for your power. That surpasses all understanding. For your joy Lord. That's the new wine that flows like rivers. Bre jo. Le bro go shikete. The rivers of living waters. Tila braga daga baga rabako tebe. Ezoto lo robo shekete lebendo. Zide redeve de beredegete redeveto. Thank you Jesus. Sela braba baba baba do robo koto. Now let's just go over into into worship, private worship. Just go over into private worship. Just tell Jesus how much you love him and how you adore him. And make sure it's not lip service. Make sure you tell him out of your heart. So that every statement of adoration, you mean it and you're consciously aware of what you are saying and that you mean it. Lord Jesus, we love you. We thank you for the cross, Lord. We thank you for your blood. Zebra baba godo robote. Some of you might want to sing in tongues. Bela ba shodo robote mene mindo raba. Libre be 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 deke. Just a new song unto the Lord. Re baga daga raba kete le re be be de de re de kito. Libre baba bando robo shekende. Hallelujah. Bless your name, O Lord. We love you, Jesus. We glorify your name. We praise you and we lift you high, O Lord. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah, Lord. Jede rebe kendo, libre bambondo. Open up to us the fountains of the deep, Lord. Jeda rabagada rabato. Show us revelations of your glory, revelations of Jesus, so that there will be worship in spirit and in truth, awakened on the inside of us. Awaken love for the time pleases, O Lord. Reba baba baba rebe kete. We love you, Lord. We glorify you. We adore you. We thank you, Lord. You are precious to us, Lord. You are high and lifted up, O Lord. Nimbe rebe kitiriandoru. 
Riba baba bando roboshe televende. Hallelujah, grembe de redevito roboshe. Just praise the Lord. Just practice the presence. Just get in the presence right now. Rende zete. This isn't the show. That's not the point. That's not the purpose. We're getting into the presence together. This is a virtual prayer meeting. Hallelujah. Grebago do robota. Thank you, Jesus. We love you. We worship you. We adore you, Lord. Zamba. Ezete pepe pekete. Thank you for your blood that is worthy, Lord. Thank you for the blood of Jesus that flowed for us, Father. Thank you for the cross of Calvary. Thank you. The, pre- the most precious worship that you can give God is to thank him for the cross, to thank him for the life of Jesus, to thank him for sub- being the substitute for his life blood that flowed like rivers. Nembro, langrabasha takaba. We thank you, Lord. We glorify you. We receive all the benefits of salvation. Every drop. We take advantage of every single drop of the blood of the Lamb of God. Ezete brabu go sheketaba. Thank you, Lord. Zi debo bobo shada baba bare de bekete bede. Lo bramando robo se de redevete. Everything that you have for us, Lord. Lord, we will receive it. We will take it with a smile, with gladness. Lord, we'll not refuse you the pleasure of blessing us, Lord. Of prospering us. Kera badobo robote. Oh, Lord, there's something wrong about that, Lord. Jata kabako sete. Where we will just settle for second best and for, for the least. That's such a false humility. Forgive us for not taking it all, Lord. For not taking and receiving it all. For not asking for it all. For not asking for all your benefits and all your... Thank you, Lord. All your benefits. We receive it now, Lord. We thank you for it, Lord. Lord, forgive us for the times we have denied you the pleasure of blessing us. You have pleasure in the prosperity of your servants, Lord. Forgive us for offense, Lord, where we've walked around in bitterness. We confess tonight that we are the blessed of the Lord. Just go into confessions now. Just start speaking the word and confessing the word, prophesying life, prophesying the word of your life, of your bank account, over your Household over your family, over your situation, to speak and release the breath of God. From the four corners of the earth, Lord, we release the breath of God to bring life. Lord, even the work of our hands, endure us with power from an eye. Anoint and teach our fingers to war, Lord. Prosper us and whatsoever we put our hand to, we will prosper in it in Jesus' name. We declare that we're the head and not the tail. We're above only and not beneath in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we speak to mountains of impossibility, mountains of delay, mountains of postponement, mountains of bondage, mountains of addictions, mountains that didn't want to budge. That was there, old, ancient mountains that were standing in our way and we commanded now in the name of Jesus to be thou removed and be cast into the sea of forgetfulness in the name of Jesus. We declare that we are not forsaken. We are not desolate. We belong to you. You said you will never leave us and never... Forsake us, Lord. Shada bagabo roboshe. We thank you for your presence, your constant presence in our lives. Make us aware. Make us sensitive, Lord. Help us to look away from distractions, to look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Tonight, in the name of Jesus, let there be fire. Let there be fire from heaven. Let there be the glory of God. We want to step into the glory cloud. In the name of Jesus, say, Baroko Takaba, Elebre Bibirieto Robota Rabatam, Erede Beketere de Ben Robosha Takababa, Elebre Bidiando Robotaka. Just pray in tongues, just start flowing in the spirit. Pray in tongues, pray in the understanding. Sing in tongues, sing in the understanding. Jiga, Elesto Kobo, Ajanga de Kudiskudor Guskadaba, Prapati Ketede. Hallelujah. Hmm. Shadow Bushiki. Thank you, Lord. Well, praise the Lord. Yo, yeah, my gimbal's flat. I don't know. Maybe I left it on or what happened. So excuse me if it's a bit shaky. If we're going to have a little bit of a shake tonight. It's good. Everything's shaking. So let's shake on the broadcast as well. And my arms, I've, I've, I've hit the gym today and my arms are shaky. So it's even worse. Well, praise the Lord, I've got to find a seat somewhere. Guys, 
The Lord said to me, blessings, provisions. I was one day in a, in a prayer fellowship. Okay, I was in a fellowship in a in a like one of these house churches. This is years ago. And what the Lord said to me, he, he showed me the whole atmosphere in this meeting turned orange. Like the whole place, just orange, the whole place. I need to get a better spot to sit somewhere. Jesus, I think that's better. So this whole place turned orange. And I asked God, what is this? And you know what filled the, the fragrance that filled the room? I mean, I could still see the people, but the whole atmosphere turned orange, like orange. I could still smell. I, oh, I could smell the fragrance of oranges. You know that orange zest, when you scratch the surface of, of an orange peel and that, that zest that's released, and you smell it, and it almost takes your breath away, you know? That, that fragrance of this, this freshly scratched or squeezed orange, whatever. I asked the Lord, what is this? I mean, this is an experience I'm having, a real experience. So what is this? He said to me, this is the wealth transfer that's coming to the church. Right? He said, there's a wealth transfer coming to the church and it will take your breath away. And it will take the nation's breath away. I didn't understand what he was saying. And while this thing is happening all over the world, you know, when you smell that orange, it, it almost takes your breath away. Now, this thing is happening all over the world. Man, and I just realized this now. People's breath are being taken away. The nation's breath is being taken away. God says he's going to take this whatever the devil meant for evil. But now he will turn it around for good and it will be the greatest transfer of wealth. Because we, even though everybody's shaking and the world is shaking, we are unshakable. We are, on the, we are part of the kingdom of God. And we cannot be shaken. Our finances, whatever. If the, one door closes, the Lord will open up another door. You can't fail. He said, I have never seen the righteous forsaken. Nor is seed begging for bread. I mean, that's a powerful statement. That's the scripture in the word. I have never seen the righteous forsaken. Nor is seed begging for bread. Stop worrying about how you're going to beg and seeing yourself begging in the streets, standing homeless, hopeless, without any. This thing will pass in the name of Jesus and you're going to come out stronger and in a better position, making more money, getting more abundant blessings and being more fruitful than ever in your life. Because when the pressure is on, that is where you shine. That's where the church shines best. It's when the darkness covers, that's where we will shine even more brighter. And look at how, how the early church, under pressure, when there was persecution, when there was pressure and things, that's where the church really blossomed. So the more pressure there is, there's something in a born-again believer that the more people push you in a corner and the more Things go wrong and the more weight you experience and the more it's being like these attacks and this relentless thing. That the more things come against you, the more the spirit of the Lord raises up inside of you and rises up and raises up a standard against the enemy. The, I'm serious. When there's pressure, when there's fire and you feel like you're surrounded on every side and your life is being threatened, something in a born again believer, a spirit filled Christian, especially, something rises. It's like the lion of Judah, it's the Christ man, it's the spirit of God, it's the fire of God that rises up inside of you and faces the challenge and then you shine and then you, if you are against all odds, that's where you put a demand on the anointing. When you feel like there's no way out, that's where you hold on to Jesus. That's when you look up to God, where you look away from distraction because you realize nothing in this world will be able to help you now. It's only God, and with God, nothing is impossible. And it's in that moment, in that, times like that, in moments like that, where you focus and the church focuses its eyes and it's calling upon the name of the Lord because there's no other way. 
Suddenly, things start happening, start falling into place. Suddenly, revival breaks out, healing awakenings. People get saved. The greatest harvest of souls is at hand. Um, above and beyond what we have ever seen in the nations of the world. This is what the Lord is getting ready to do. And we are right now in a position, and Satan overplayed his hand. He didn't realize what he was doing, messing with the church of the Lord Jesus, because we are the head and not the tail above and not beneath. We are precious to the Father. He keeps us as the apple of his eye. He said, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. God gets jealous over people that touch God's worshipers. Or when Satan comes and he overplays his hands and he thinks that he's not defeated. God is about to enforce the victory of the cross of Calvary and pour out goodness. God said to me, goodness is coming to the people of God. People of God, there is a balm in Gilead. You will have double for your trouble. This anointing will come as a balm, as an oil of joy. It will bring joy in the morning. God is about to turn your captivity. You've been praying, God, turn my captivity. Change my life. Help my life. Save. Turn it around. God is doing it now. Now, he stepped onto the scene. From the 1st of January 2020, this has been in the works. And God is going to use it because he's working behind the scenes and he's setting up his church for a mighty, mighty restoration. He says that the goodness of God leads men to repentance. He says, he said to me in a, in a, in a, in a prophetic word where he, he said that I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. This is what Elijah saw in Kings 8, 1 Kings 18. He said, I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. And he says, go and tell the king, you better go because the rain is going to catch you. And then he girt up his loins and he ran out in front of horses. And there was supernatural acceleration and a miracle of God. And there was an acceleration and the abundance of rain came to a drought stricken country where the dry and the weary land cried out for water because Elijah prayed and there was no rain for three and a half or three years whatever but here he prayed seven times that it would rain earnestly and then the rain came and he said I hear the sound of the abundance of rain and I tell you the abundance of rain is coming and they those who are spiritual can hear the thunders and the lightnings they can hear the abundance of rain approaching the storm God said to me in a prophetic word in January, he said, this is the year of the calm before the storm. It's about, and now everybody's calm. It's like it, we're in a pause. We're in a sila moment. We're in a time of just resting, calming down, quietness, waiting, be still and know that I am God. And the storm of God's goodness and his glory is coming to the church. Against all odds, against what the news says, against what the people and the economists and the financial advisors and all those people with their thick, glasses and their white coats say god says that my promises are still yes and amen i have paid for you with my life blood so that you can have provision so that you can prosper so that you can be successful in everything that you do whatever you put your hands to will be fruitful will be successful there's an anointing of prosperity god has provision he said i will make all grace and i have and i am able to make all grace abound unto you so that you will always have all sufficiency in all things he said we know the grace of our lord jesus christ that though he was so rich yet for our sakes he became poor so that we through his poverty might be made rich the blessing of the lord makes rich my god shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory by christ jesus hallelujah my god has pleasure in the prosperity of his servants says seek the kingdom first and all these things and his righteousness of God and all these things after which the Gentiles seek will be added unto you there is the spoils of war if you go through Abraham Abraham was blessed the blessing of the Lord came upon him and the promise was made to the seed which is Christ and everybody that is in Christ is heirs also of the promise and the blessing of Abraham the gospel was before preached unto Abraham saying in you will all nations be blessed. The gospel was preached unto Abraham saying, in you will all nations be blessed. 
God wants to bless. That's the gospel. That's the good news. We're not preaching a bad news, God, a bad news message. We're preaching good news. What is good news to somebody in prison? Freedom. What's good news to somebody that's hungry? Food. What's good news to somebody that has no clothes? Clothes. What's good news to somebody that's poor? Money. What's good news to somebody that's sick? Healing. There's healing. There's prosperity. There's provision. There's funding. Because God has finished the end from the beginning. And God said that there is even now spoiled. So Abraham was blessed. He increased in cattle. He increased in servants. He increased in gold and in silver. Man, go and read how the Lord blessed him. Then it was Isaac. Then it was Jacob. Everything they did was prosperous. That was under the old covenant. That was un They weren't born again yet. But the gospel was preached unto Abraham. How much more now those who are washed in the blood of Jesus, who is born again, who are, who are the first fruits of the spirit of the, of, of the resurrected Christ, hallelujah, the manifested sons of God. How much more now that we are washed in the blood of Jesus and we are born from above and we have a spiritual capacity to receive his instruction. We are sons of God, hallelujah, by the blood of Jesus. And we're in a better position than Adam. Adam fell. He had a spirit. A uh, measure of the spirit, but we as the body of Christ, as the spirit without measure, the whole body of Christ, obviously, um, has the spirit of God without measure. And we are part of the second man. Jesus was the last Adam. He wasn't the second Adam. He was the last Adam. Adam was the first man, but Jesus is the second man. So everybody that's born again is part of the second man. You are in a place that is greater. Your authority is greater than what Adam had. Because Satan still operates under the authority that he stole from Adam. But now we have authority of the second man. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ and his authority is without measure. The spirit without measure. Hallelujah. So we walk in the authority of Jesus Christ, the name above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, including poverty, including lack and want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. If you go through Exodus, how the Lord saved them from Pharaoh and with plagues and with all kinds. Of, and he brought them out with a mighty hand through the Red Sea. What happened? They came out with great substance. All the gold, all the silver, all the precious stones, all of that that came out with them out of the land of Egypt. And Egypt was one of the biggest empires or kingdoms or whatever you want to call it in the world at that stage. And God brought it down and converted and transferred the wealth. So now the word declares that the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. Our gates shall not be shut day or night as the men shall bring in the forces of the nations or the forces of the Gentiles. That means that the money that they have laid up, they've stored it in houses, they've worked, they've acquired it with all kinds of terrible means. Their money will come to the righteous because the just shall live by their faith. Hallelujah. And we will see a supernatural wealth transfer. He said you will live in houses you didn't build. You will eat of vineyards you didn't plant. Um, there's flocks. There's, thing, there's so much. There's your house. Your, your bonds will overflow. He says with wheat and the finest of wheat and with oil and with wine. God has made provision in the shed blood of Jesus so that we can have. And it's time for the church to take advantage of every single drop of the blood of Jesus that was shed for us. We've got to pray like Jabez that said, bless me indeed. Not bless me a little bit with a shack in the corner of glory land. He says, enlarge your tent, enlarge the place of your dwelling, stretch out, lengthen the cords, inhabit Take over, have dominion, because we're going into the promised land, just like Joshua. He went in, Joshua and Caleb went in with a, with a land that's flowing with milk and honey. And they conquered and they took possession of the land with the hand of the Lord mightily upon them. And they received the spoils of war. The angels of the Lord brought spoils of war. You can go and read Kings and Chronicles and Esther and Bo um, Ruth. Ruth, it's everywhere. It's the prosperity is all through the word. And Jesus did not just die. He died for every area of your life. His blood brought you a complete work of salvation. It's not just a half a work of salvation. He came to save sin 
Then he also came to heal your diseases. And his blood flowed also for your provision. Because you shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of living water. Your leaf will not wither. You shall bear fruit in your season. Every month of the year you'll bear fruit. And whatsoever you put your hand to will prosper. There is a blessing of the Lord upon the church of Jesus Christ. And what Satan wants to do is he wants to intimidate you and keep you poor. And keep you in bondage. And keep you in a place where you're not receiving everything that the Lord has paid for. <coughs> it is blood. So we had a mighty revival of soul winning throughout the ages. In the early church, we had soul winning. There was a revival of soul winning. People's, the whole world was turned upside down. Because of Paul and the missionary journeys and so on. Then 200 years ago, there was an outpouring of the Holy Spirit through George Whitfield, um, Charles Parham, Charles Parham, William Seymour, Azusa Street. Um, all through, the, there was this awakening of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And what was the order of the day? The next was the healing awakening, the healing revival. God awakened healing. He awoke the healing revival so their sins were forgiven. People got saved. Okay. People got set free. There was sanctification. That was Azusa Street revival was sanctification. Because that's where the doctrine came of sanctification. That it is a third work of salvation is sanctification. Or a second work. And the third word was, but anyway, go and do a study of it. Then there was the healing now, the only thing that we still need to see a massive, mighty, or a mighty move of God in the face of the earth is a restoration of financial blessing and provision and prosperity in the body of Christ. And this is totally going against any false kind of a humility, all kinds of self-righteousness. It's got to bow its knee to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. We've got to receive what he has for us. So I was sitting in this room. I had a vision, the whole room, where I was in a house church or a meeting, the whole room was filled with this orange glow. Uh, and the, the pungent smell of freshly squeezed oranges or this, the zest of the skin. I mean, if you, it almost took my breath away and God said, this is the wealth transfer that's going to take away the breath of the world. And now we'll see, we're seeing that among the nations of the world, there's a shaking. They, they're losing all their money. Where's the money going? The money's not disappearing. The money's still there. It can't disappear. So all the money is still in the world, but people are losing everything. And on the same time, other people are making it. Other people, there's a money, a wealth transfer of wealth, but it's for those who believe. If you don't believe it, you don't have to take the money. We'll take it. We'll use it for soul winning and for evangelism and for houses and cars and bless. <laughs> Hallelujah. Good clothes. Praise the Lord. So we'll receive the best that the Lord is. And so he said to me, he started teaching me, he said to me, the first step into prosperity and to my blessing that makes rich. And he adds no sorrow with it. The first step is to repent of poverty. <laughs> and I said, Lord, what do you mean I must repent of poverty? I'm the one that's suffering here. You're the one that's not blessing me. And I realized what I just did. I pointed my finger to God. I said, but you're the one that's not blessing me. As if he's somehow reluctant. And I've got to now to bless me. And I've got to now somehow convince him and I've got to earn favor with him and I've got to work for it and I've got to convince God because that's actually manipulation you're trying to twist his arm and people get manipulative when it comes to God if they don't understand that it's already done you don't have to manipulate God to heal you you can just receive it. It's done. It's done on the cross of Calvary. Jesus paid. The blood of Jesus paid for your prosperity, for my prosperity. We've got to receive that benefit. If we do not receive the benefit of prosperity and provision from heaven. Now it's all through the word. It's in the Bible. If we don't receive the benefit of that prosperity, then God can't do 
and he's, he is not glorified through your life. If you can't buy food for your children, if you can't pay your rent, if you can't pay your bills, God's not glorified through that. We, our lives has got to be a witness. We've got to be a testimony of God's goodness, of God's blessing, of God's faithfulness. When the world looks at you, they've got to know the glory, the, the knowledge of the glory should be all over your life. Because the carnal man cannot discern the things of the spirit. The only way that the world can know the glory, they can't discern the glory. They can just know the glory, the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. Uh, the glory will fill the earth as the waters cover the sea. So they're going to see your car. They're going to see your house. They're going to see uh, your children are well taken care of, your wife, your husband, whatever. So you're going to look like you are a child of God because that's what we had in the Old Testament under the Old Covenant. How much more now? But somewhere along the way, we've allowed Satan to trick us out of receiving the prosperity and the blessing of the Lord. Now we think it's holy to be poor. That's not the case. Jesus became poor so that you can be rich. And he became poor on the cross. He, didn't, he wasn't poor when he ministered, he didn't they lack anything. Nothing. They brought him, kings brought him gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Now you come to the king of kings, and you're a king. What kind of a gift are you going to come and bring the king of kings? They wanted to come and honor him. They didn't come with a little shekel of gold. They came with gold. They had camels. They came from a far away. You think they're going to travel far to bring Jesus a little gift, little nugget of gold? He was honored as the king of kings and three kings. Well, I don't know if it was three kings. Maybe it was more, but there was three gifts. Maybe there was a whole company of kings. I don't know. The Bible didn't say there was three kings. They said there was gold, frankincense, and myrrh. So there's three gifts that they brought. Hallelujah. So Jesus went to his home in Capernaum, and then he went to his home in Galilee, and then he went to his home there in Nazareth. So he had homes. They had a treasurer. Judas stole money out of the treasure bag, the money, and nobody even noticed. Jesus knew, but nobody noticed. That's how much money there was. So they did not lack anything. And then Jesus sent them. He said, now leave all the money. Leave everything behind go with nothing don't take a purse with you don't take anything with you now go and preach to god you know preach and tell them the kingdom is at hand and they came back and he asked them did you lack anything he said no everything we needed was supplied you don't lack when you are in, on call of god and you're on a mission and you are sent by god there's no lack it's not when we lack it's because of unbelief when we lack it because we have not taken full advantage of every single drop of the blood of Jesus. He has paid with his life to bless you. And you're sitting there and you say, oh, I don't want it. I don't want the blessing. I'll just take a little bit. I just want a little shack in the corner of glory land. I just want the bread and water to live off of. But he paid with his life. He paid for it already. It's not that he hasn't paid for it. He has paid for your blessing, for your deliverance, for your provision, for everything that you need to be met according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. But you sitting there and you're like, oh, I don't want it. That's a slap in his face. You are grieving the spirit of grace. You are quenching the spirit of God. What is the ministry of the Holy Spirit today? The ministry of the Holy Spirit is to teach us what things we have freely received of the Father. We have been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Now those spiritual blessings is every blessing of healing, every blessing of deliverance, every blessing of provision, your needs being met. Everything has been paid for and it is yes and amen in the heavens. 
It is done, it is complete. But now he says, pray that let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Not like it's going to be. There is already, the victory is already assured. We already have the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We are more than conquerors. Through Christ who loved you, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. But the church is walking around with their head between their shoulders and they like. That's why he says, you are my glory. You're a shield around me. And you are my glory and the lifter up of my head. God says they, where there is casting down, where there is people cast down, he says there is a lifting up. But you've got to believe it. You can't doubt this. You can't, you've got to say, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me for not receiving every benefit of the drop of, uh, of every drop of, Every benefit of every drop of the blood of Jesus. Forgive me for not receiving your blessing, your abundance, your prosperity, your success. I've lived my life and I've allowed Satan to steal what was rightfully mine. This is my inheritance. I'm a co-heir with Christ. What does he what what does he own? The whole world. All the nations. The gold and the silver and the cattle on a thousand hills, the earth and the fullness thereof, and they that dwell therein belongs to him he is the heir of all things and now he says you are my co-heir but we don't want it because somehow we have settled for some false humility self-righteous doctrine of the devil that's been swindling you and tricking you out of your inheritance nobody thinks Anything of some Muslim or a Satanist or a drug lord driving around with billions and billions of dollars. But when a Christian rises up, now you know, it's satanic. Satan has attacked the church to keep you poor, to keep you in lack, to keep you settling for second best, third best, for some of you haven't even, you've settled for just survival. God does not provide for his children like that. He has already made provision. He's looking for somebody who will believe. Somebody who will not doubt. Somebody who will call Satan a bluff. He's call, call his bluff and say, The Lord has got me and he's got provision. The wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. The spoils of war is coming to me from the north, south, east and the west. My gates shall not be shut day or night. The treasures of the deep, the wealth of the wicked, the hidden riches in secret places, the gold and the silver. He said, for iron you will have silver. What? For, for bronze you will have silver. For iron, oh, you, you, <laughs> there's a scripture. For gold. You will have gold as dust. Job 22. That's a key prophetic verse for this whole decade that we are in. This new era, Job 22. Powerful scripture. Job 22 says you will have gold as dust. That means you're not even going to count gold. It means it's going to be like dust to you. You'll have no respect to it. When God says, give your car to this person, you'll do it. If God says, take your house and give it to somebody else, you'll do it because you will count it as dust. It'll, it'll be like dust. Now you get people. And this is the problem. This is why people get offended with finances. They work their whole life. They dedicate it. They commit it. And they work. And they're, hot, and they're disciplined. And they get up early and they, they do it, man. They do it with all them and they're doing it for the Lord. And, it, and then they buy a house and then they buy two houses and then cars and then furnitures. And, and I mean, they've got abundance, they've got wealth and they do it for 30 years, their whole career. They've worked their whole life to have a few houses, debt free, got some cars, got money in the bank, got a pension. Now God comes to you and he says, Sell all you have and give it to the poor. But I've worked diligently my whole life. I worked so hard. God says, give it to the poor. Who is your provider? Are you your own provider? <laughs> Goodness, guys. That's when you know money's got you. When you go to the church... There is a missionary, he, he needs money to, and support to go and preach the gospel on the front lines. 
you're reluctant to give because you work so hard for your money. Because it's your money. You know that God gives you power to obtain wealth. That's why he warns the people. He says, but you will be sure to remember the Lord, your God, who gives you the power to obtain wealth. In other words, he's the one that gave you the power. He's, gave, he's giving you the breath in your lungs. He's giving you the two arms and the two feet that you need. Now, I mean, imagine if things have you. If things have you, you might have cars and houses and things, but you are poor because of the greed inside of you. Because you hold on to what is yours. You store it in. God says your wealth is laid up for the just. It will be given to them. It shall be added unto them because they seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Whatever you have added and stored up, and you might have a big fat bank account, worked your life, where's that money going to go? Your children's going to just inherited or somebody's gonna your money's not gonna disappear with you unless you get buried with chunks of gold <laughs> you know some people get buried with their money they refuse to give it to anybody else. <laughs> but somebody somewhere is gonna dig it up you know they get it you can't take it with you so now you got this all this money and one day your life is taken it's required of you Where's all that money going? It's laid up for the just. Some, somewhere, somehow, somebody's going to get it. When you go and do evangelism, this is the wealth transfer. Listen to this. If you come to a billionaire and he's an atheist, he's never given his life to Jesus, he's, he's lived his whole life, he, he accumulated a lot of wealth. The moment he gets saved, all his money becomes kingdom money instantly. You know why? Because when you get saved, you give God everything. All that you have, all that you are, all that you will ever be, all that you will ever possess. Your whole life, everything belongs to Jesus. That's the only way to get saved. You can't get saved by giving God 50% of who you are. It's 100% total surrender. That's the only way to be born again. You give God everything. Now people complain, they're sitting in churches, they are busy with religious activities, call themselves Christians, but they have an issue with the tithe. To pay a tithe, they're trying to say, no, but that's under the law, and, that, and they're trying to justify not paying tithes. You know what, this was before the law. Abraham paid a tithe before the law came, in 400 years before the law came. It's a principle. It's not a law. It's a principle of the kingdom of God. But listen to this. If you've got a problem paying a tithe to the house of the Lord and the work of the kingdom of God, because those who preach the gospel must live off of the gospel. If you've got a problem with a tithe, how in the world are you going to give the 90% or the 100%? How in the world are you going to give more if the, if the Lord tells you to sell it all and give it? Will you say, no, that's the devil. No, the devil will never tell you to sow for souls. The devil will never tell you to give all your money away for, for somebody that's preaching the gospel or that's winning souls or building a church or ministering to whatever. You understand? That's not the devil. The Holy Spirit might. He might tell you, listen, give everything. Because he's got, it's not that he wants you poor. It's this funny picture. Of a father and his child. And he goes into the shop and he buys his child a, a chocolate. And they get in the car. And he asks his son, can I please have a little piece of that chocolate? And the son says, no, it's my chocolate. You're not getting a piece of this. But... It's his father that gave him the chocolate in the first place. If he knew, if he had the sense to realize that his father can buy the whole shop, all the chocolates in the shop he can buy if he wants. But he's asking him for a piece of chocolate, the chocolate that he bought in the first place. If he had any sense, this child, he would give his father and say, take as much as you want, daddy. Because he'll realize where he is source comes from and you, you understand <laughs> there is a place where you 
Oh, it's raining, I think. Wow, praise Jesus, it's raining. It's a sign of the abundance of rain that's coming. So, if you realize that God owns it all, you're not going to have an issue if you trust Him. But if that money has you, then it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to go th- to, the, to inherit the kingdom of God. But with God, all things are possible. So it's about giving. It's about not having and allowing the world and the things of the world to take possession over you. But that means you've got to rule over mammon. That means, look, it's not, <clears throat> if you can't pay your rent, if you can't pay your debts, if you can't support your family, and you can't minister and co- fulfill the calling of God on your life, that's not now you're inheriting the kingdom because I can't pay. If, if poverty made anybody holy or a better uh, saint or a bigger spiritual giant, then India and Africa would have been the most holy continents on the face of the earth and countries. Then we would have revival already. But go and look how it looks where there's poverty, where Satan is king and he's ruling. Go and look where there's poverty, how people are killing each other, where there's sickness and viruses and plagues and pestilence and hunger. Maybe you, you, it's easy for you to say, oh, you're going after money and you're going after money. You've been working your whole life for money. You've been working your whole life from eight or seven or six in the morning, right through till six in the evening. Every day of your life, you've worked for money. But when a preacher preaches that it's God's will for you to have money, you now suddenly offended. You see, that's an offense about money. Money's got you. That's why God said to me, repent of it. You're not just repenting of, of poverty when you have nothing in the bank. You repent of poverty, a poverty mindset, even if you've got a billion in the bank. You can have a poverty mentality, a victim mentality. You can be so stingy and greedy that you gather everything that you can. You're not sharing it with anybody. You're putting it away in a bank account. And when there's work to be done, when there's a need, when somebody needs something, you can't touch that money because you worked so hard for it. You're poor in your head. you got all the money, but you can't use it. Throw it away. Get money that you can use. It's a currency. It's not called a currency for nothing. A currency means it comes. Money comes. Money comes. It's a currency. It's flowing. If you dam it up and there's no, then, then it's because you've got to release. Money, it's sowing. This is the kingdom of God. Sowing and reaping. The kingdom of God works on this principle. You can't hold and hoard the, the money. And say you're in the kingdom of God. No. You give it away. And then expect God for more. That keeps you dependent on God. Not on finances. I loved what Oral Roberts said. He's a mighty evangelist. Passed away a few years ago. He said an evangelist. And if you're called to be an evangelist. You don't have millions in the bank. In a savings account somewhere. Because there are more people. There's more people to get saved there's more people to reach with the gospel and you're going to use that money to preach the gospel to and go and look at his life oral roberts built a university millions of dollars worth but every month they had to trust god by faith for the next batch of money to come in every time this is how god works he's not going to give you the lump sum he might do that's fine all right, but he's not going to give you the whole amount. What he normally does is he says, what is in your hand? And then he takes what is, what is in your hand and you do what you can with that money. Even if it's all your money that you own. You do what you can with that money in the direction that God spoke to you about. And then you trust him for the next amount. When that, So you start a building project. Don't wait until you've got the, all the money in the bank. He says, that's, that's not kingdom. You've got to do it by faith. So you, first of all, you lay the foundations. You've got the money for the foundations, then you do that. By the, by the time the foundations is finished, 
the money will start coming in for the walls and the structure and the roof and the aircon and the electricity and the plumbing and the carpets and the chairs and the pulpit and the window and the parking lot and the gardens and the fountains and it's all coming but it's not coming just why now this is the kingdom when listen to me because god involves people he wants his body involved jesus came he could have turned the rocks into lumps of gold he could have taken his he could have sold his house he could have done everything he could have taken his money he could have had this massive you know investment and he didn't have to charge anybody he didn't have to get anybody involved but jesus didn't work like that no ministry in this world is called to function like that when john g lake received this calling he was a very wealthy man okay he was a good businessman when john g lake received his calling what happened god said to him give away everything give all your money away he gave it away and he had five dollars and him and his family somehow by some miracle got a ticket they got the money just for the ticket to get on a ship to come to south africa because god called him to south africa and yeah he preached and i think it's over 600 churches that he planted at the afm church in south africa he planted these churches miracles i mean a revival of miracles all over and so by the way there was the 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 plague there was a plague that time as well here in south africa millions of people died and john g lake you know the story he would just touch the people and the people would get healed because he said he was walking in the spirit of the law of the spirit of life and so those demons and those those play, those germs died when they touched it but john g lake gave all his stuff away this is what god told him then he came to south africa they didn't have a place to stay they didn't have a house they didn't have any contacts here there was no afm church yet no pentecostal church here they came on and they were standing in line and they needed money to come through customs into south africa and then because they look at how much money can you support yourself they didn't have a cent they didn't have any money standing in the line to on in the line for customs in the line Somebody came to him because they are these children. His wife asked him, What are we going to do? He says, God will provide. In the line, somebody turned around, came to him, and said, God just told me to give you this money and put a whole lot of cash in his hand. Okay, some, some money in his hand. When he got through customs, a lady came to him and said to him, God showed me in a dream last night that there's a missionary coming from the United States with five kids and his wife and him. And I want to ask you, are you that missionary? He says, yes, these are my children. This is my wife. We've come to preach the gospel. She said, God told me in a dream last night that I've got to give you my house or one of her houses and the furniture and everything. And there's your place. And you can stay there as long as you like, as long as you want to preach the gospel in South Africa. This is true, true story. And I can tell you, I mean, you can go and look at the lives of men of God. From Hudson Taylor, from George Mueller, from every, from the, God always involved the church. Jesus received sustenance and from the, from the people. There were women that were actually sowing into Jesus' ministry and they gave of their substance to Jesus and the disciples. They were, he involved people. But never mind that. In the church he involves people. Paul talked about having opportunity. You have given. And, and he talks, 1 Corinthians, he talks all about finances, about you shall not muzzle an ox while it is treading corn, and that those who preach the gospel shall live off of the gospel. And So it's in the scriptures. It's in the word. And you can be prosperous and you can be successful. If God doesn't, he says, actually, he's got pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. So, so God has this blessing, this anointing for finances that is available, that is yours by the shed blood of the Lamb of God. And the first thing we've got to do is to say, Lord, we repent of poverty. Listen to this. We've got a wrong idea of sin. Let me, let me rectify something all right if somebody is sick okay they're in a wheelchair 
You're not going to go to that person and say, what's wrong with you? Why are you in a wheelchair? You know, don't you know Jesus died for you? What's wrong with you? So we're not going to judge them because they have sickness. We, we will actually feel compassion for them. Isn't that the truth? If you see somebody suffering, if they're sick and they need healing, if they're in pain, if they're struggling, if they have torment, there's compassion inside of you. So, Lord, oh, help, help, help. You know, we're not going to walk around judging them, telling them, look at you sitting in that wheelchair. Who do you think you are? What's wrong with you? <laughs> okay. You, if you do that, there's something wrong. Okay. You're not going to go to a poor guy that's sitting begging on the street and say, what's wrong with you? You know, and accuse him. And there's going to be compassion. The poor, you feed the poor, you give, you help where you can. These people, he says, the poor you will have with you always. When somebody's struggling, they don't have money. We want to now, we want to help. But wait until somebody, when you see somebody doing sin, or the works of the flesh, or they drinking or smoking or doing something. Huh? What do you think you're doing? You know? Now we want to accuse. Now we want to judge. We want to kick them out of the church. We want to put them under same, uh, whatever. You, kick, you bring them before the whole Board of directors and every, and they are in trouble, man. Okay? But that's not what God does. God says, I didn't come to the world to condemn sinners. I came to save sinners. I didn't come to condemn the world. Why? Because he realizes, this is the truth, sin kills you. That sin, if anything, when you see your brother falling, the compassion and the love of Jesus must rise up in you and help them right. Because if you don't, if they go down in that path, that sin will destroy their life. It's like a sickness. Poverty is like a sickness. Okay? To describe it in a better way. God hates the sin, but he also hates the sickness. He doesn't allow sickness, but Somehow he disallows sin. God hates sin. God hates sickness. And God, the Father, hates poverty and lack. Let's pray. Father, forgive us. Have mercy. And it's not that he judges us because we are poor or that we are sick or that we are in sin. He loves us and he wants to rescue us out of that. So when he sees a sinner, he hates the sin. But he knows that that sin is like a cancer eating that person alive. They are struggling. They can't stop. They don't have the solutions. They are in addiction. They are in turmoil. They, there's torment. There's no rest for the wicked says the Lord. That person is dying and Jesus comes and has compassion and saves them out of their sin. Don't you think he can save you out of your sickness? Don't you think he wants to save you out of your poverty? You see everybody living a wonderful life. Everybody is building houses, having families, everybody is driving around, Everybody's worshiping God. Now you think God's got somehow a respecter of person and he does not want to give that to you. I'm telling you in the name of Jesus, you've got to realize God wants to bless you and he's already done it. You don't have to convince him. And you being poor does not make you holy. It just makes you poor. That's all. Who was it? I think it was President Washington. George Washington that said, or Abraham Lincoln, he said, the best thing that you can do for the poor is not to be one of them. The best thing that you can be for the poor is not to be one of them. Then you can help them. You can't help somebody who's poor if you're poor. You can't walk with a plank in your own eye. But now you want to go and help the poor. Now you want to go, you understand? We've got, to, we've got to receive what God has. And this is the wealth transfer. Oh, Jesus, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will come with your healing balm and you will heal our 
our broken lives. Restore, restore, restore the years, Lord. Revive the work of thy hands. Restore the years that's been stolen. Restore everything that's been stolen. If a thief is caught out, he must repay at least double, even up to sevenfold, even up to the entire substance of his whole household. That's under the old covenant. How much more when Satan comes and steals that business contract, when he comes and steals your stuff, and you are robbed, and you are taken, he says, go and recover all, says the Lord today, go and recover all, and take, and today, Father, we claim the entire substance of the whole household of Satan, we are bankrupting the kingdom of darkness in the name of Jesus, say amen to that, we are bankrupting the kingdom of darkness in the name of Jesus, you think God wants you to live off of bread and water while all the people that's denying him, that's rejecting him, they are killing, they are destroying each other, they are killing the planet, they are fighting, they are whoring around, <laughs> they, they are sinners, but they're eating lobsters, tails, and they are eating the caviar and the Belgian chocolate, and they are flying in their breakfast from Paris. And they're eating the best. You know, he says, I will satisfy your mouth with good things. So that your youth is renewed like that of the eagles. We're sitting around. We've got no, no problem with people that are stealing money. Drug lords. People that have. And when we say we claim that money for the kingdom of God. Now people want to justify poverty. That's a spirit. That's an evil spirit. That's a satanic stronghold in your life. Sir, you've got to break that thing down in the name of Jesus. You are called to be blessed. And it's not optional when you are a child of God. It's not optional. Prosper. Go and take possession of the land. He said, be fruitful and multiply. Subdue the earth. Replenish it, whatever. They have dominion. Hallelujah. God wants you to have dominion. Because there's work to be done here. All right. In Jesus' mighty name. So, Father, we thank you. We receive the instruction of the Lord. We will be blessed and we will be prosperous. And we release and loose the finances. Let the supply lines be restored right now in the name of Jesus. Let the restoration come. The houses, the harvests, the inheritance that we have received of Jesus, with Jesus. What do you think he inherited? He is the resurrected Christ, the son of the living God. What do you think he owns? What do you think God the Father gave him as an inheritance? Huh? And you're a co-heir with Christ, but you don't want it. This is a rebuke, I think, or an instruction. I hope that the Lord will give you faith to believe. Yeah, but the economy is falling and the world is in lockdown and there's a virus. There's been viruses that you don't have any idea about. If it was a serious virus, I think they would rather keep it quiet. There are things that's, that's being kept quiet. All right. So there is an abundance. You know, who that? There is an abundance with your name on it. God wants you to prosper. He wants you to be successful. He has pleasure when you are successful. He didn't. This is the good news. We're not preaching a poverty gospel. Like Jesus. Come to Jesus. He's going to make you a failure in life. This is the gospel that we preach. You're going to be a failure. Everything you do is going to be a mess. You're never going to make anything of yourself. That's the gospel. Come to Jesus. Come on, man. What are you preaching? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? He says, come to Jesus. And I will fill your mouth with laughter. At my right hand, these pleasures forevermore. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Hallelujah, man. I mean, I know what it is. To have the blessing of the Lord and His presence around me. You know that when the presence of the Lord is with you. 
and you have good fellowship with the Lord, He likes to give you things and, and, and see, and He wants to share things with you. Good things, good things. All the good things in this world belongs to God. It doesn't belong to Satan, but we've allowed Satan and his children to take it, but we can't have it. No, it's yours in Jesus' name. But when you have the presence of the Lord, you know what? You'll enjoy the good things in life. But without the presence of the Lord, you're not going to enjoy your money. You're not going to enjoy the good things in life. Not like you would when the presence of the Lord is with you. When the presence, when you have a good relationship, when you have peace with the Father, then the sky is bluer and the grass is greener and food tastes better and you enjoy company better and you see life through God's perspective. You're not going to waste things. That's not what I'm talking about. If you've got enough money, praise the Lord. But what about building an orphanage? I was in Mozambique a few years back. There was a war, a civil war in Mozambique. If you have any idea about how many street children there are in Mozambique. And they are be they're being trained up. They are drafted by the gangsters and by the mercenaries and by drug dealers. We are losing a generation in Mozambique because the Christians don't have money to build orphanages. The government doesn't have money. And they, not, they just squander it. Well, you can give them money and because of a poor mentality, I guess, it's corruption. It's about taking what you can to survive because they're thinking of themselves. You know, corrupt governments. I'm not saying, don't come and visit me. <laughs> or send me an email. I'm taking it in as an example. But the fact of the matter is, that the government in Mozambique and in many other countries in Africa and especially India, oh man, all around. Just go and do this, the, the research. They can't take care of all the orphans. Because people in this world wants to take what they can, can what they get, sit on the can so nobody can get it. That's the mentality. There's no, it's selfish. When you are selfish, you're not part of the kingdom of God. Then mammon is your God. And the love of money is the root of all evil. You don't love money. You love God. What about being blessed to be a blessing? What about you build an orphanage? What about you build Christian orphanages and hospitals and daycare centers and old age homes? I was surprised to see the price, prices, the, the, the cost of, of an old age home. Of old age homes in South Africa. I don't know how it is in the United States or anywhere else. But it seems to me like this generation is taking advantage of old people. Because they are paying through the roof for care per month. I'm talking about thousands and thousands of rand. Just for a small little room and stupid little food I mean, poor quality food. They don't even receive proper care, but they take all their money. Um, it's sick what's going on. Nobody, the government, is also not taking care of the old people in old age homes. You've got to see the way they treat the elderly. Where are those old people going to go? Who's going to take care of them? Are, I, are they at the mercy of their grandchildren that have no time for them, that's got to now leave their job to take care of the... Well, uh, uh, but the church doesn't have money because it's the right thing to do. We've got to be poor, brother. We've got to carry our cross. That's not the cross that Jesus was talking about. He says, if you suffer for the sake of the gospel, that's the sufferings of Christ. You don't suffer for the sake of suffering... Do you think God is a sadistic father that wants to punish and torture his children? Suffering, suffering. Your doctrine has got to be corrected, ma'am, sir. Hallelujah. The Lord is speaking tonight. Your doctrine has got to be submitted. The truth of the matter is that God told me 
that there is coming goodness and restoration and the abundance of rain is coming. It's coming, but it's for those who believe. He'll not force you. You take it. You receive it. God hates poverty and lack. He says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. So his goodness is coming like the healing balm of Gilead. All the years that you've been forsaken and it felt like you were last in line and it felt like it was delay upon delay, postponement upon postponement, nothing is working out for you. It's not God that was behind that. God has made provision for you. It's time to take the scripture, read the promises Find the promises. Get the promises of the word of the Lord. It says all my promises are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. Get yourself key verses. Job and Achman. The whole word is full of it. Every, you can't hardly go through a book in the Bible where it's talking about money and finances and blessing and abundance and the wealth of the wicked turned to you and how the Lord will prosper you and you're going to be the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath. Bless going in, bless going out. Now God says that this abundance is coming to you and you will have double for your trouble. You will be like them that dream. The world is going to stand in shock. Their breath taken away because of how God blesses you. You're not going to get a big head. You're not going to keep it for yourself. If God tells you, give it over here. Give it over there. Give it to that person. Give it to that ministry. Build this house. I want to bless you. Go and buy yourself a Ferrari. Go and do that. Then you do that. And you do it with a smile and you do it with thanksgiving. You're not going to tell God, no. Far be it from me, Lord, to buy a Ferrari and drive a Ferrari. That's a satanic thing. Like, Get behind me, Satan. Get behind me, Satan. Get behind me. I don't care whether it's a Ferrari or whatever is practical. Whatever the Lord tells you to do, do it. You do it in Jesus' name. It's just a, a car. It's just for we. Why should the Muslims and the Hindus and the Hare Krishnas and the, and the, the guys, the antichrists of the world, why should they drive sports cars? But the Christians can't drive sports cars. Nonsense, it's just a car. Who cares how much it costs? It's not about money. It's not about the cost. It's about God being your source. He says, come and buy without money. Come and drink without money. Come and buy milk and wheat. and Whatever you need. Don't even buy it with money. What do you need? Do you want a Ferrari? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Whatever you want. You want one? Pay with it with the currency of faith. Don't pay with it with money. Don't ask money if you can buy a Ferrari. Money will tell you, no, you can't. Don't ask money if you can preach the gospel across the nations of the world. Because money will tell you you can't. Ask God. He will say, yes, you can. Because He's your source. And then money will come from everywhere, but it's for traveling. And you'll pay with it, or somebody will buy you a ticket, or somebody will open up a, a, whatever. You'll be translated in the Spirit, whatever. It's just a means to an end. But ask God if you can fulfill the calling. If you want to build an orphanage, ask God. Don't ask money. Ask God. But then money must bow and come to you. And another thing is money is drawn to you. You, you become a magnet. This is, this is one of the mysterious, the mysteries of the kingdom. You hear a message like this. There's preaching. Now you show up in church and you believe you are blessed. You're a billionaire in your spirit, man. It doesn't, it's not showing up yet, but in here, you believe that you receive, you shall have it. It's just a matter of time. You walking around. I mean, you're not seeing billionaires walking around with a bag of money on their, on their back. But they walk differently. They got money in the bank. They got money in the bank. They're walking around with a plastic card or uh, whatever. And they're walking differently because they know, man, they're billionaires. I'm a billionaire. I've got money. I can do what, I can go where I want. I've got the luxury of options. I can go and send my kids any place. I've got this money. Now you get a, but they're not walking with the cash on their body. 
How do you get a poor person? They, don't, they also don't have the money with them. They've got nothing in the bank. Or they're walking like this, bent over, the world on their shoulders. But no, not one of them has got the cash. The other, the other guy just has faith in the banking system. And what is happening now is the banking system is failing. People's money that they had in the bank is suddenly disappearing. And suddenly that billion is not worth much. Because it's just not worth what it was a year ago. The, you can have a billion, but if it's not worth anything. One of the most ridiculous things that you can imagine happened in Zimbabwe in Africa. Zimbabwe, Robert, the late president Robert Mugabe decided that it's a good idea to take every white person's land and just kick the white people out and that's it. And they, well, without compensation, they didn't buy that. They just took it. All the farms, or a lot of the farms that was white owned, they were put under sanction and suddenly their money became useless and they printed it on paper, um, newspaper paper. That's where they, what they printed their money on. You realize that it got so worse that a bread cost five billion Zimbabwe currency money, whatever they, what, what, they, it was five billion. The currency is still messed up. But the money fell and was so little worth that later on you paid a five billion, whatever the currency is, for a bread. You can, there's more billionaires in Zimbabwe than anywhere in the world. Just about everyone in Zimbabwe is a billionaire. But what billionaire of what? You understand? So your money is not, you trust the banking system. And now you have confidence, you have faith in it, and it changes your attitude. It changes the way you, your outlook in life. You're smiling, you're confident. Man, and you're a go-getter, and you're doing things. You're not walking around with any money on your pocket, in your pocket. You just trust the banking system. Can we not lay up for ourselves treasures in heaven where wrath and must, uh, rust and moth and thieves can't break in and steal and destroy can't we believe that we have been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places can't we receive can't we walk around like billionaires if a billionaire in the natural a carnal sinner without jesus in his life and walk around with confidence with a smile in his dial and he's happy and he's he's got he's a billionaire he's got money how about the Christians start walking around like that, believing that all things are possible and believing that God's promises are true, that He will supply all your need according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus, that He is able to make all grace abound unto you, that you will have all sufficiency in all things that you may abound unto every good work. Can we not believe that? Hallelujah. So that's the thing. It's the currency of heaven. So this is the thing that I want to talk to you about. You, you listen to the sermon and you receive it by faith. And now you believe, you receive, you shall have it. And it will come as the Lord releases it. And you're going to stay in faith, stay depending. Whether you get a billion today, may the Lord, you're not going to now build a barn and keep it for yourself. And now that's greedy. That's, you're going to lose it. If God gives you a million dollars, use it immediately for the kingdom of God. Believing that the same God who gave you a, billion, a million yesterday can give it to you again tomorrow. Because it came from him in the first place. Now you want to keep it. Now you don't want to share it. Now you don't want to sow it into soul winning. Now you don't want to give it to the, because how is Because you think you're lucky. It was just plain plum luck. You don't believe that God gave it to you. If you believe that God could give it to you, then you would use it and you would use it for the kingdom and you would better lives. And you would spend it because it's a currency. Kingdom currency. Anyway, so let's just say you've got your money. This is how this kingdom works. You do a supernatural act of faith. That's how kingdom things work. <clears throat> God loves a cheerful giver, so you in church... And let's say you are believing God for the finances, but you haven't seen it manifested yet. So you've got $100 in your pocket. And that's all the money that you own in this world. 
You've got no money in the bank. You've got a hundred dollars. That's everything you've got. Now, that's a lot of money to some people. But basically, in, in general, that's not really a lot. You can't survive a long time with a hundred dollars. Now you've got this, and, and, and the people in that you go to a church service and they take up an offering. But because you have the received the, the resources of heaven and you've received God's provisions inside of you, you're a rich man inside. He says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in good health. He says, I wish above all things. This is how high God ranks this. I wish above all things that you prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. So now you've got prosperity of the soul. You believe, you receive it, you've got it. They take up an offering and you get up. This is not natural. A carnal man will never do this. Never. This is totally against a carnal person's because they are natural. They're having, they don't have the spirit of God. They're not walking in faith. They're walking in. What is in my pocket? Are you walking by faith? So the offering comes and you take that with a smile. Generous giver. Because you have, you're not just owning 100. Maybe in the natural. But you know there's more where that came from. So you take it and you sow it in the offering. And you're walking around. You've got open heavens. And you're happy because you were obedient and you were willing. And God is good. And, and it's wonderful. You know what happens in the spirit world? The world around us, the natural world, is listening to every word you say. And they're looking, they're watching your every action. Because the demons and the devils and the angels know that a poor man does not give. A poor man takes. Okay. A rich man gives. A poor man takes. So here you come to church. You've got nothing but a hundred dollars and you sow it into the offering. Suddenly there's chaos running around in the spirit world. Demons and devils and angels alike. They are going and they say, whoa, there must be something wrong on our records because this man just gave We've got on our records that this man is a poor man. But a poor man does not give. A poor man takes. So he has overridden. He overrides through a supernatural act of giving. He overrides fallen creation. This world is subject to change. It's a temporary world. And when you... Do an act of faith, a manifestation of the faith that is in, because where your heart is there, your treasure will be also. When you do that, the world is shifting and changing because now suddenly they've got to rectify what's going on here. Now money comes to you. That's how it works in the spirit world. It says, give and it shall be given unto you, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Will men give into your bosom? It says, cast your bread upon many waters, because after many days it will come back to you. You don't know which one, what's going to. So be a giving person. God so loved the world that he gave. He's, now, if you want to be like God, you've got to be a giver. God is a giving God. If you know Jesus, you want to walk in spiritual maturity, don't grab. Or, now you look at pastors these days in ministries. They are grabbing every cent that they can and their bank accounts are in the millions, man. They're sitting with so much money in the bank accounts, but they can't have an evangelistic program. You can't use their car or their truck or their bus to go and win souls because there's so much red tape because they're holding all the money. A lot of churches, but God is shaking these churches and the churches, they're going to release that money because that money is kingdom money. It does not belong to that business. It belongs to the kingdom. (laughs) I call them businesses. They're not churches. All right. So override it with a supernatural act of obedience and faith. That is seed faith. If you have faith like a grain of mustard seed, Sow a seed. You know what I do? I take a seed 
And if I need something in my life, let's say I'm trusting God for a, for a new car. Then I would ask the Lord, Lord, give me an amount. And Robbie Cancross taught me this. Evangelist Robbie Cancross said, Lord, what seed, what amount of seed? So I don't get the, the 200, 300, 400,000 rand for a car to go and buy the car. What normally happens is God provides seed for the sower and bread for the eater. So God provides me a seed, an amount. If the money that you, don't, that you get is not enough to buy the car, then it's most probably seed. Don't go and put it in a bag and sow it. So you get an amount, and I ask the Lord, what amount must I sow for that particular car? Or the? So God will speak to me, sow a seed of this. And then I, I go into the offering and I name my seed. I don't just throw seed away on money away. It's seed. No farmer goes, it's, the kingdom calls it seed. You don't go and plant seed and you don't expect the harvest and you walk away. Oh, I'm so generous. I've got this big farm and I'm going to put thousands and thousands of rands of seed into this big field and I'm going to just forget about it and walk away. I don't want to harvest. I don't care about a harvest. I'm just going to walk away because I'm such a generous, I'm just putting seed in the ground. <laughs> They'll lock you up. If that's the kind of farmer you are, all right, you're a very unfaithful steward of God's finances that he's given you. You sow into fruitful ground. You sow that seed, and then you call in your harvest. You say, I name this seed. Some of you have been sowing for years. What you need to do is, I claim my harvest. I'm not just going to let seed go rot in the ground. I'm claiming it in the name of Jesus. You have walked around and you've confessed negative. You've cursed your seed. Oh, it doesn't help. I've sown so much money, but it doesn't help. It doesn't work. You never. You just got to give and then walk away and don't expect anything to. If you talk like that, you are cursing the seed in your life and death is in the power of the tongue. So God is calling people to sow. And this is the way of the kingdom and that's how you live by faith. Whatever, if, you, if you're trusting God for whatever you're trusting God for, ask him for a seed and then sow the seed. If you get money and it's not enough to get, it's probably seed. Most likely, because he gives seed to the sower. But will you trust him to sow that? Or you're going to keep it like a little child that's got a chocolate from his father. And when his father asks him, give me just one block of all those ten blocks. No, it's my chocolate. That's the love of money is the root of all evil. This is greed. This is poor man's mentality. You've got a whole chocolate, but you can't give one piece back to the person who bought you the chocolate. That's immaturity. That's poverty thinking. Because you're greedy. You are poor. You've got a whole chocolate, but that's all you're going to get. If you gave and you shared, you would have probably instigated a, or, or a caused a, a harvest to come to you. Okay. So if this has blessed you, praise the Lord. Lord, Father God, we plead the blood of Jesus over people's finances, over people's livelihoods, over their careers in Jesus' name. Let the anointing of the Holy Spirit come upon you to give you power to obtain wealth. Let the goodness of God, the sound of the abundance of rain, come and heal the disappointments and the despairs of the past, the years that's been stolen from you. I declare in the name of Jesus that you are going to be healed by the balm of Gilead, the oil of joy. For this, you clothe with garments of righteousness and robes of righteousness, garments of praise in, the G, in Jesus' name. No more depression, no more despair, no more discouragement. The good news to you today is that your Father wants to bless you, wants to see you prosper. He has pleasure in your prosperity. He wants to give you the desires of your heart. He's not a bad Father. He's not a stingy Father. He's a good provider. The supply lines is being restored as we speak. Angels are encamping around about you. They will, know, they will not be killing, stealing, and destruction. Jesus said, I have come to give you life and that more abundantly. 
And it's yours in the name of Jesus. Believe it. And if this ministry has blessed you, if this message has blessed you, then as you have opportunity to sow into my life and into my ministry. Now look, I'm going to put my PayPal accounts and my bank details on the comments. But listen to this. You don't go and eat in McDonald's and then you go pay in KFC. Kentucky Fried Chicken. You go and eat in McDonald's and then you go and take your money and you give KFC your money. That's not how it works. You, you sow where you get food and where you are nourished and where you get sustenance. That's where you sow because that's the kingdom. That's where the things are happening. Otherwise it's dead ground. You're wasting your money. So so into my ministry and my life, souls are going to be one in Jesus' name. Broadcast, I want to boost the posts of these broadcasts. I believe a lot of people can be blessed through it. And then I also want to, you know, there's a lot of things that I need to do. And systems that's got to fall in place, the website and all that kind of stuff. And money answers all things. So the Lord can use that money that's in your pocket to answer it. I know that he's already answered it. He's already supplied it. But he will use his church. So I give people now these days, I give people an opportunity. I'm not begging you for money. My God shall supply my needs. But I give you an opportunity to sow and so that, and I will stand in agreement with you and everybody that's partnered with me, everybody that sowed, I release the blessing of the Lord upon it. I stand in agreement with you that tonight's word, and I mean, when there is a word like this, when there is a preaching and a prophetic teaching on finances, then you sow, all right? You sow. Whatever it takes, whatever you do, you sow. So this is an wealth and prosperity. So you sow in Jesus' mighty name as the Holy Spirit leads you. Take the body and the blood of the Lord Jesus. Let's have communion, guys. This is, this, it bankrupted heaven to save your soul. So that when you receive Jesus, you receive all that heaven has to offer. Because you receive God. When he abides in you, you have all. And his yes is confirmed through the blood that was shed on the cross 2,000 years ago. It is done. You don't have to convince God. You don't have to please. Just, you don't have to plead. All you have to do is believe the truth. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Poverty is satanic. The curse of fallen creation is poverty. If you are sick, you are poor in health. If you are sinning, you are poor in righteousness and poor in peace. And poor of life. When you die, you are poor of life. You lack life. When there's torment, you know, you lack comfort, quiet, cool, calm and collect, whatever you want to call peace and rest and love. When there's fear, there's a lack of love. So whatever there's a lack of, Satan brought a curse, uh, or Adam brought a curse, and Satan uses lack. His weapon is lack. If you don't have peace in your life, if you, have, if, you, if you are in prison, you're in bondage, you have a lack of freedom. So lack and poverty is the curse of fallen creation. And poverty is satanic. Heaven is not poor. God is not poor. God is not poor. He is almighty. He created the gold. He created the silver. He created good things. And he said he will not withhold any good thing from those who walk uprightly and from those. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the face of the Lord, they shall lack no good thing. Praise the Lord. So it's yours in Jesus' mighty name. And as he gave his life and his body was broken for you and his blood was shed for you and for me, we can take it today and we say, thank you, Lord Jesus. Jesus, that you have given and provided and the price has been paid. We don't have to beg. We don't have to be professional beggars. We can just walk in the fullness of what you have done for us in the name of Jesus on the cross of Calvary. And I thank you, Lord, as we receive right now all. And I'm taking it for myself, for my ministry, for my 
family, for the work of my hands, for the art business, for everything that I put my hands to, it shall be prosperous and successful. And tonight, Father, I receive it for love born in the name of Jesus. I receive it also together with everybody watching, everybody's listening, everybody that's connected with this ministry, that's sown in this ministry, that's going to sow, that's praying for this ministry. Lord, every connected uh, that's watching even the rerun, Lord, we receive the anointing of wealth and prosperity and success and abundance and provision and forgive us for not taking it all yet, but we are taking it tonight. We believe we will prosper. In the name of Jesus, we do not believe in suffering lack. We do not believe that the good things in this life, you have, you have desired it to go to sinners and godless people, godless nations, people who are killing, stealing and destroying and fighting and lying to, to, and using deceitful ways to get that money. Lord, those things are la laid up for the righteous and for the just. So today I thank you, Lord, that the wealth transfer is busy happening. Give ideas. Give, show us the way. Show us what we need to know, Lord. Give us innovation, strategies. Bless the work of our hands, Lord. In Jesus' name. You did not desire all the good things, all the beautiful places in this world, the islands and the mountains and the forests and the hills and the lakes for sinners and godless people to enjoy that and to enjoy their lives with all the money and the children of God must sit here. No, we rule and reign in this life. We enjoy this world. We can go, we can travel, we can see the mountains, we can fly in airplanes, we can eat the best of the best we can our mouths will be satisfied with good things that is god's desire for you receive it allow god to bless you by eating the body of the lord jesus don't deny him the pleasure of blessing you amen <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thanks up grape juice and receive the blood of the Lord Jesus. His blood speaks for you. His blood speaks for you. Better things. Hallelujah. A good word. A better word. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. <sighs> Praise the Lord. Sheila, Jackie, and bless you, whoever has been watching. The Lord bless you. Lord, confirm this word with signs, wonders, and miracles in your finances. And I prophesy to you. In the name of Jesus, that God will confirm this word. And money is coming to you. Miracle money. It will come. He's got millions of ways to get money to you. He's not bothered with the way. Just the reason. What is the reason that you can be blessed? I'm not asking you what's the reasons why you can't be blessed. There's millions. But there's one reason why you can be blessed today. It's the blood of Jesus. So you just partake of the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. I release an impartation of wealth. We stand in agreement. We said the two or three agree touching anything it shall be done. And today we say amen, yes and amen as we agree as one in the name of Jesus. We receive prosperity from the hand of God. Amen. And amen. Bless you guys. Please share this. Please, please. This is a powerful word. I know the camera work was probably hectic. But God uses the things that are not <laughs> to bring sick and sound. The things that are wise and the wisdom of the world, this is truth and violence. Bless you in Jesus' name. And I pray that the Lord just blesses you more and more. Tomorrow, probably in the morning, I wanna I wanna start a morning session just for 20 minutes. Where I'm just gonna pray in tongues for 20 minutes, then we're just gonna worship for 20 minutes. 
So every day we're just going to practice the presence. Then I'm going to put some worship music on just to practice the presence. God said to me, show the people how to do it. And then they will, when they watch it, when they can see it, they can have it. Okay? So that's what we're going to do. The other, the other two things in the evening, I'm going to teach more. And we're going to pray for people more in the evening. And um, go into prophetic teachings and prophecies and, 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 and stuff like that. So please share this. And I know it's a bother. Everybody says it's share, share, share. But please share this. Even if you're watching the here on If this is such good. So into my minutes, I'm going to put it there. Paypal.me forward slash loveborn. You're going to see souls saved. You're going to carry this revival, this anointing. You're going to carry it to the nations of the world. We're going to see the church of Jesus Christ rise up and the body of Christ activated to participate in this harvest. Activated to be functioning, to be relevant, hallelujah, to be significant in this world and be fruitful. So bless you guys. Thank you. I pray the harvest. Thank you so in Jesus' name. Love you. Hallelujah. Bye-bye.